Welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey. We are live right now on Facebook, YouTube, and on Rumble as well. And if you're already watching on Rumble, make sure you watch for the entirety of the show. Cowboys Report After Hours, once again, exclusively on Rumble. I did another seven-round mock draft. This one with trades, which I think I crushed the draft. We'll see if you guys agree or disagree. But make sure you stick around for that on Rumble only. It's rumble.com slash Cowboys TV. The question of the day, which has already torn apart the audience in the comments section. We are once again back to hating each other. Uh, it was a nice like two and a half week, three week period where we were all just like kind of mad. And now we're, now we're just really mad at each other. Over or under, 10 and a half wins. Over wins right now, 67% of the live vote. You can also type in O for over and U for under in the comments section. Clayton says he hit the like button. Thank you, Clayton. Terry says you. I know Dallas 8-9 says under because, well, it's in his profile name. Very easy to tell. Uh, Roger says 10 wins exactly. Zero says Roy. Or Roy says zero. Wow, I must have read that one. Inner Circle says over. Oh, I, oh, oh we get someone in for Dak. Doesn't... You're going over, though? It's weird. Uh, maybe it's just a mistypo. Uh, Clayton, the Texan trucking cooker or truck, truck cooking with Trucker's Life. You're back, my friend. Happy to have you. You're saying over in there as well. Uh, Toad French says 15-2. and two. Okay, sure. Uh, Green Candle Guy and my boy Giuseppe says 12 in the comments as well. 11, 13, and 4. Mostly overs, but it is, it is, e is even-ish there. Now, 69% though of the live poll say over. That's nice. Let's make sure we keep it at that number. We'll also spend some more time on the draft. I know many of you guys like Tyler Linderbaum uh, in a similar vein as my Derwin James theory a few years ago. I've got one on Tyler Linderbaum that we'll break down on today's show. So, will the Cowboys? who will the Cowboys draft in round one? Let me know in the comments section. And who do you think they will? Not who do you want. Who will they draft? That's important for the conversation we're going to have later on today. Zion Johnson, Jamison Williams, Fats the Hard, I would love Jamison. I don't think he's going to be there. Now, I, we've been wrong before. I thought the corners would be there. I didn't think CeeDee Lamb was going to be there. Happens every year. There's somebody that you thought would be there or someone you didn't think would be there. The inverse happens consistently. Jahan Dotson, Kenyon Green, Zion Johnson, Malik Willis. I'm not taking a quarterback. Come on, bud. Who will they draft? Derek Stingley, Tyler Linderbaum talk about him later on in today's show. Traylon Burks, Chris Olave from Mike and Roger Moore, respectively. Coolio now says Luka Doncic. It's funny. Uh, again, another Traylon Burks there. Oh, Cam's kidding. We're all good, brother. Uh, Duncan says me. Uh, I see you mean Duncan says like Duncan is going to get drafted. Uh, another Luka in there. It's funny. Derek Stingley, Kenyon Green. Tyler Linderbaum, Kenyon Green. Derek Stingley, again, Traylon Burks in there from Terrence Pullman. Bernard Raymond from David. God, I would hate that pick. I would absolutely hate that pick. Chris Olave's in there. Kyle Hamilton, dot, 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 let me dream. I will let you dream because that'd be uh, that'd be pretty fun on that on that uh, standpoint there. N'Kobe Dean, the number 69, uh, which is always fun there, Duncan. Thank you. Uh, LeBron James, if he played football, he might be a cowboy. Seems very on brand for, for Jerry and LeBron. Super Chat has just come in from Robert Duran, the first one so far. Thank you, Robert. You're the MVP so far. Cowboys are just main needs in the draft and fill holes after in free agency. Most teams do the opposite. How do you feel about that, given draftees are improving? It's not quite what they do. Uh, what they tend to do is... Fill the need in free agency or re-signings so that it's not like a glaring need outside of this year with offensive guard. They haven't they haven't added anybody from that standpoint. But they did it last year with signing guys at safety and, and you know defensive back and edge, etc. Like 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 the Terrell Basham signing. So that what they can do is take the best player available at any position almost. Uh, they're not gonna take a running back in round one or a quarterback in round one, that type of thing. So uh, the point is that they don't like just fill, fill a need all the way through with a big time free agency signing, which is kind of a little bit frustrating. Now they'll probably sign a guy or two in free agency afterward, 
but their goal is to not spend much in free agency, which annoys me to no end, and then just take the best player available. They've done that with all their spots except for offensive guard. That's the one spot they really haven't done it, and it's why we talk so much about offensive linemen in this year's draft. Now what they could do is something they've done before, trade away a player before or during the draft. I, I remember the Jihad Ward-Ryan Switzer trade, which was neither team really won that one in the end. Uh, I thought Switzer was going to be really good for the Cowboys. Oops. So will the Cowboys do that? One for yes or zero for no? Let me know in the comment section if the Cowboys will trade away a player before or during this year's draft. I also want to shout out um, Rex, who said uh, under on the earlier question on Rumble, and then JVSCuz27. I see you guys in there on Rumble. Thank you. Um, mostly zeros coming in here. Dow Dallas 8 9 says Deering. Uh, zeros from Fats to Hard, Good Life, Cam Funk. We'll break down some trade candidates for the Cowboys. I think it would depend on what they do during the draft. That's going to be the big thing uh, in terms of the needs they could possibly fill. Now, I don't want to be done in free agency, and I would bet the Cowboys sign somebody after the draft. They've done that in recent years, and they're a bit more willing to spend after the draft with some bigger guys like Everson Griffin, for example, which, of course, ended up not working out really uh, at all, but it's, it's all good there. So, name a free agent you guys want to sign. So, Corey's trolling with, with Terrell Owens, and I love it. Thank you, my friend. Uh, Brandon Cooks, Honey Badger is in there right now. Multiple, multiple uh, Honey Badgers right now. OBJ, oh, do you trust, do you want two injured guys? That's, that's the fear, right? Do you want two guys coming off ACL tears? Brandon Cooks are, is a trade, by the way. Jarvis Landry, see, I don't want Landry. I think he's cooked. I think Landry's cooked there. J.C. Treader. We'll talk about J.C. Treader on today's show. But Super Chats coming in from Dwayne Jackson. Tom, what player on the roster, if any, do you expect to get traded during the draft? Dwayne, stick around. Uh, third part of the show we'll do. We'll, we'll do the rumors. We'll do the, 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 the mailbag. We will also do Cowboys trade candidates. I got six names in total, so I'm not going to spoil it right now. And I appreciate your super chat, and you're in luck. We're doing an entire segment on that today. Oh, from now, toxic Tom Downey Burner. So we've added toxic to the front. Okay. Uh, Tom, I don't trust Stephen Jones with my trash, let alone trades. When was the last time the Cowboys won a trade that wasn't purely draft picks? Dead serious. When was it? They're not good at negotiating trades or contracts. They draft well, but they're not good Elsewhere, I, I am sorry to to inform everyone of that. Another Super Chat coming in here from Robert Duran. We'll get to that one. Worst case scenario in the draft. Uh, what are you doing? Who do you pick? I, I'm going to operate as the worst case scenario is this. You are picked over at offensive guard. Zion Johnson, Kenyon Green are gone. The top five receivers are off the board. Devin Lloyd's off the board. Linderbaum's off the board. Uh, in that scenario, there's maybe someone has slid to you, but I just I trade down. Uh, I, I'm taking maybe even less than the actual trade value chart says I should get to move down and still get a solid player later on. So in that worst case scenario, I'm moving down, and you know I take, take a Sky Moore at the top of round two or something along those lines. I'll get extra draft capital to make up for not getting the prime impact player I really wanted to. Now, several of you have already commented on Brandon Cooks. So what is the percent chance you think the Cowboys go out and trade for Brandon Cooks? Get your votes in for me right now in the comment section. And remember to like the video if you haven't already. I think it's low. We will spend some time on Cooks and let have a new report saying that the Cowboys called about Brandon Cooks. There's a, a double D word that, reminds, uh, that I am reminded of of that particular one there. I see negative 69, 4 and 20 percent. Nice. Good job there. 60 from Dakovin. Um, 5 percent. 15 percent. 6. 6.9. It's a good one in there. Jacob now says with a super chat, sign either Brett Maher or Earl Thomas. I need a beer for that one. Uh, because that's brutal. Uh, absolutely not uh, for either. Of, of course, I know you're trolling, Jacob. 
I appreciate that. It's, it's all in good fun there. 0%, 0% chance, 25%, 25% on the Brandon Cooks trade. Zero, 40%, etc. cetera. So here's what's coming up on today's Cowboys show. We're going to do our rumors and news, as always. We're going to do two mailbags. Use hashtag Cowboys or Super Chat to get your questions in on the show there. We'll do some trade candidates. And after the live show wraps up on YouTube, on Rumble only, we will be doing a seven-round Cowboys mock draft with trades. I put it all together. I fixed the Cowboys. It's not that hard, Steven. Just let me be in charge. I took the good players and got extra draft capital. Super easy to pull off. So if you haven't already, go follow us on Rumble. It's rumble.com slash Cowboys TV. I see Rex1417, JVSCuz27 are already in there in the live chat. I appreciate that here. Uh, the sewer chat from Roger Moore will get to mind. Oh, we'll get to the mailbag. I see it. I appreciate it, Roger. Just remember, Cowboys report. After hours on Rumble at rumble.com slash Cowboys TV. We'll put the link to the live stream in the comment section for you guys. That's coming up after today's live show, which gets, which gets going right now. You're watching the Dallas Cowboys report presented today by Manscaped. After all, it is the statistic. Wow, messed that one up pretty good. Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. Not a great start right there. Cowboys report is sponsored by Manscaped, manscaped.com. Use promo code Cowboys to get 20% off and free shipping on all their top of the line men's grooming products. Manscaped.com, promo code Cowboys. All right, we'll get going here at some point, I promise you guys. So again, manscaped.com slash Cowboys. This is the Cowboys Report. Our first rumor on today's show, could the Cowboys go trade for Brandon Cooks? This one is interesting to say the least. I'm going to give it one star. The background here is that the Cowboys, according to Jordan Schultz, were among the teams that tried to trade, or at least called the Texans, about trading for Brandon Cooks. Now, the Texans allegedly, in this part for Mike Fisher, won a second-round pick for Brandon Cooks. Now, that also report also said, oh, no, but, but we're not going to trade Cooks. So we're not going to trade him, but you know we're going to be able to make that work. If, if we were to do it, You know, we're, this is what we would be searching for there in the end. So... Maybe they are open to trading away Brandon Cooks. I would be very surprised if the Cowboys made an offer that is remotely similar to what the Texans would be wanting for Brandon Cooks. Other teams that were linked, by the way, per that Jordan Schultz report, the Green Bay Packers, Dallas Cowboys, New Orleans Saints, Philadelphia Eagles, and the New York Jets. Now, Again, I'm not quite sure that's a likely outcome for the Cowboys, given some of those teams are a bit more aggressive in adding a Q, uh, receiver. The Texans wanting a second, I think, is a bit rich uh, after what we saw Amari Cooper go for, although they got a lot for Deshaun Watson, so you give them some credit on that front there. This feels and just stinks of due diligence by the Cowboys organization. Clearly, between their, I think, their leak of their Devontae Parker interest and this getting out there and just looking at their roster, we know this team is looking for more wide receiver help. We know they do not want to be done at this position. The contract they gave James Washington, all of those things are indicative of a team that goes, yeah, we're still looking for another good off or another good receiver, another good player that they don't feel like they have right now. Uh, at their current roster at the current moment. So we'll see what happens on that front for the Cowboys, but I don't think they're done adding receiver help. I just find it a lot more likely it comes via the draft than it does via a trade. Maybe if you miss on the guys round one, round two, maybe you call an offer the third at that point. So I want an honest answer here for me. What is the percent chance that the Cowboys go out and trade for Brandon Cooks? Let me know right now in the comments section be honest with me, the percent chance the Cowboys trade for Cooks. Let's talk draft now. The Cowboys won't draft Tyler Linderbaum. I'm going to give this one three stars. And it's, I know Brian Broaddus has mentioned, and I'm in the exact same mold here for, for Linderbaum, who I love. This falls into the, what I call the Derwin James category. A couple years ago, we were all wondering, hey, could the Cowboys go get Derwin James? That'd be pretty cool, right? He's an awesome football player. Similar boat for Tyler Linderbaum. But 
The Cowboys have not shown interest in Linderbaum. And in the past, outside of Micah Parsons to an extent because there were no 30 visits and the C.D. L- L- Lamb year, the Cowboys almost always draft a guy with their first pick off of the 30 visit list or someone they have shown a significant amount of interest in. That has not been the case for Linderbaum. The Cowboys don't hide this stuff because, well, they want ownership, your GM, to meet with your first-round pick at some capacity, which could happen in the combine, not so much in for the Cowboys the way their roster is set up. The Cowboys' 30 visits that could go in round one are these 10 guys. Three receivers, Traylon Burks, Drake London, Chris Olave, Charles Cross, who I don't think gets to you in round one. Bernard Raymond, I think, is way too early to take in round one. The guards, Kenyon Green, Zion Johnson, Jordan Davis, the defense tackle, who I don't think gets there, but again, maybe they're thinking, well, if Cross or Davis falls, that's the impact player at a position of value that we want to investigate more. Devin Lloyd and then Quay Walker would be a, a surprise round one pick, but I think both those guys fit what Dan Quinn wants to do, a bit more than the organization likes uh, than, say, a Nicobe Dean, who I actually like just as much as Devin Lloyd. So these 10 guys, there is a very good chance at your first-round pick is one of them. I think it's one of the receivers or the guards. You can trim down to those five players. But that is the likely path this Dallas Cowboys team ends up pursuing because that is what they've done in the past. That is not a Tyler Linderbaum pick, which I'd take him. We'll see if he's even there, but I'd take him. I'm not sure the Cowboys like him all that much, which is disappointing to me, but they, they like length, and that is not Linderbaum's strong suit. So what do you think? Who do you believe the Cowboys will draft in round one? Is it, do you still think it's maybe it's Linderbaum, or is it somebody else altogether? Let me know right now in the comments section. Today's show is powered by Manscaped. April is Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, and Manscaped's doing everything they can to help eradicate that as well. And they're giving you some great deals on all of their great men's grooming products. Manscaped.com, promo code COWBOYS, gets you 20% off and free shipping on everything on their site. From the performance package you see up here to Just the Lawnmower 4.0, the Ultra Premium Collection, everything is available at that discount, 20% off and free shipping when you use promo code COWBOYS. Let's stick with center, this time free agency focused here. How about signing J.C. Treader to go be the center for the Dallas Cowboys? I'm going to give it one star. Again, like Linderbaum, I have a lot of interest doing this myself. I'm not sure the Cowboys feel the exact same way. The idea floated out there by Inside the Star. It's a good idea. It's a logical idea. No, no disrespect. I think it was a good, good thought process. He was a surprise cut by the Cleveland Browns. I was not anticipating him being dumped by that organization because he's good at football, right? Here is, and I, I think I think Broadus, I think it was Broadus, had mentioned this too, and I, I again, I agree. I've had the same thought myself. I wonder if being the NFL PA president is a bad thing for Treader's career, which is not okay, not supposed to have that issue for unions and union heads, but he should be out there. Uh, he's a pretty good football player, and he's pretty consistent overall year. I mean, his production this past year was good. Like, I know that he's getting up there in age. I understand all of that. But Treader's played 16 games, five straight seasons. He's on the wrong side of 30. Age is a factor there. I get it. But I, if, I, I think if you get Treader in, in, uh, on your organization right now, you are instantly better at center. And he's even the age where maybe you could sit a little bit and allow him to allow Biotis to sit for a year and maybe take back over again next year. So I know the age is, is a factor. I get that. I've been around the NFL for a long time, but he's still good at football. I don't think he'd be that expensive. It is surprising to me that he remains unsigned. Now, if you want the best Dallas Cowboys coverage on YouTube, subscribe at youtube.com slash cowboys tv make sure those notifications are set to all that way you don't miss out on anything that happens with the dallas cowboys only like 20 percent of you guys actually have noties turned on so let's get that changed right now 
One last Cowboys rumor here today. How about going out and signing Trey Turner? I'm going to give this one star, and I, I wanted to give it two because I'm a little bit more intrigued by it, but there are some problems that I think we have to kind of work our way through on this one. So Bleacher Report went through and named one free agent. Each team could go out and sign. Turner was the pick for the Dallas Cowboys. An offensive guard, unquestionably, is their number one need. All right, like there's no doubt about that. Offensive guard, you've got one starter that this team trusts right now, despite how your scouting staff might have felt about Con Connor McGovern. The team, the coaches, don't like him right now. And Turner, eh, uh, for the guys out there, he's one of the top three, I'd say, at minimum there. The problem is, and I think you could also blame the quarterback and Big Ben being a statue back there in the pocket, seven sacks. He, he didn't make guys miss why there were no quarterback hits allowed, 13 hurries, so it's not terrible. He was a lot better um, in terms of his play in 2021 than his play in 2020, or just 2020, excuse me. He was bad 2020 much better in 2021 and like we mentioned you know you've obviously got Zach Martin he's a stud Connor McGovern is not it and you know maybe you think uh Isaac Alcron could be a piece okay I'm not feeling too optimistic about that one here's your number one problem Trey Turner has only played right guard in his NFL career, it's the only spot he's played. As he approaches 30, it typically gets harder for players to switch sides and make a move to a, a, a different technique. If everything's like this, okay, now it's all like this. That, that seems easy. It's actually a lot more challenging for some players, for example, like Connor McGovern. So that is a significant issue from that standpoint of, hey, can he make the switch? I, I don't know if he can. And that's why, partially why I only gave it the one star in terms of him being able to play that area. So what I want you guys to do right now, and I've got one coming up here in a second, is I want you to name a free agent that you guys want to go out and sign in the open market. Drop that name for me in the comments right now. Eric Flowers is my name here. Because adding Flowers means you would not have to draft an offensive guard early if the value isn't right. The way this roster sets up right now is that you've got to take a guard top 50, 56, I guess, because you're probably not going to find an instant starter in the third round. Maybe you get lucky there, but you're almost you're pigeonholing yourself into that need. So if Flowers is affordable, it's a big if, he can start for you at left guard. He's not great. He's not even as good as Connor w Williams was. But it gives you enough that, best case, he's your backup. Worst case, you know, he starts for you and holds down the fort until the younger guy you drafted comes along a little bit better. I'm looking at guard as the area I still want to sign somebody. And Flowers, who has been a left guard, intrigues me from that standpoint. All right, the pinned poll of the day, over or under 10.5 wins for the Dallas Cowboys. Right now, we are at 67% who say over. 33% say under. Micah Parsons, of course, is in the chat right now. Bobo's got a fun name he wants to add. Appreciate that. So does Tool Worker. He, he, you guys are having fun. I, I, I respect it. It's funny. Uh, let's see. O for over, U for under. Dusty says over. The schedule's easy. Devins, I think they get 10 wins. Toolworkers spamming in fake names. It's funny, buddy. I get it. That one's too easy. You have to use Hugh, not huge. That's that's the trick. Um, someone mentioned in Dominic and Sue. Uh, Burner account says under. Roy Williams says over. Chris Romero says over. Micah says over. Good job. I'd be, I'd be concerned if Mike Parsons didn't say over. Uh, and then Joe says over. This division is awful. It's mailbag time here. As I just, my cord just kind of got in front of me somehow. Use hashtag Cowboys or Super Chat if you want to get on the show. So Roger Moore, Cool Shark, and uh, Tsavaji Fej. I got that wrong. Um, it's going to call you TF in there. I see your Super Chats. We will get to those to kick off the upcoming mailbag. A reminder, folks, seven-round Cowboys mock draft coming in on Rumble only. So I see Rex 
and JVS and Bobby Hass carrying the comments right now on the Rumble side. What up, guys? I see you in there. Appreciate that. We will have that mock draft live only on Rumble. So if you want to tune in, head over there. Rumble.com slash Cowboys TV. We'll make sure that link gets put in the comment section and in the description. It's in the comment section, but in the it's in the description in the comment section as well because we'll be live on Rumble only after the normal YouTube show wraps up. Today's Dallas Cowboys report is presented by Manscaped. You can get 20% off and free shipping on all their incredible men's grooming products at manscaped.com when you use promo code COWBOYS. First up, a super chat from Roger Moore. Keeping in mind the Cowboys' biggest needs, what position group has the biggest drop-off from Tier 1 to Tier 2? It's a good question. Um, I think the center grouping of Tyler Linderbaum, everyone else is significant. Um, it's not very good. For me, Cam Jurgens more of a third-round guy. He could go top 75 or even be a surprise like even earlier player. I think there's some decent day three value there. Guard jumps out to me because I like Kenyon Green. I like Zion Johnson. Then there's kind of Darian Kennard. And then kind of everybody else um, who's out there. So I'm looking at the interior offensive line. that the, You need an instant starter up there, and it's a bit thin beyond the first couple of players. From Cool Sharky, per Broadus, this is his, so this is, I assume, Brian Broadus' trade idea. First, fourth, and a fifth. Let's move to 13. Okay, so let me, let me get the trade value chart out, up out here. 24th overall pick, plus a fourth. I assume you're also moving your first, fifth round pick. That gets you roughly to, I, I got it more to pick 20. Um... That's a pretty big jump if you're moving your fourth and fifth. So um, I, I would be very surprised if that level of trade gets you up a le uh, nine spots in round one. So I think if you're moving one of your other picks, your earlier picks, yes. If I can get a fourth and a fifth to get to 13th, yeah, I'm in. That's really below value. From TSA, what do you think the Cowboys' chance of drafting a great offensive lineman is? Well, in the end, we have to give credit to the team for developing the offensive linemen. We've seen many good players get drafted and then suck because organizations are a disaster. I think there will be really good prospects on the board. Are you going to draft your next Zach Martin, your next Travis Frederick, your next Tyron Smith? Ah, no, probably asking for a little bit too much on that front, but you should be able to get a very good player who's a multi-year starter for you. From Danny Dallas, are Josh Ball or Sima Fayoko going to help this year? It's a good question. Uh, those two players uh, were basically red shirts this past year. Josh Ball was hurt and was an IR stash the entire year. He had to add strength. Fayoko is a fifth-round pick versus the fourth-round pick for Josh Ball. He didn't do much of anything. And again, fifth-round pick, fourth-round pick. I don't know how much you're looking to lock yourself in for those guys being core contributors. But you're hoping that they do break out. So with that in mind, who breaks out this year for the Dallas Cowboys? Name a player you think takes a big-time step forward. I'm going to make this question the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. From Dwayne Jackson, if Mike McCarthy doesn't at least reach the NFC Championship game, Will Jerry Jones give the reins over to Kellen Moore, or they try to get Sean Payton? The problem, uh, Kellen is the head coach in waiting. Are we sure that it's Kellen who's the head coach in waiting and not Dan Quinn? Because I think Dan Quinn has a better shot of replacing McCarthy of the internal candidates that the Cowboys have on their staff. We know that Jerry liked Kellen, but the offense in Kellen Moore did not do a great job down the stretch. And I think Kellen's scheming gets a big, you know, a, a big blame for that. Jerry's always wanted Sean Payton. I feel very confident that he would try to explore that in the end. Um, but I'd say it's probably Sean Quinn Kellen. Um, and if they don't reach the NFC Championship game, depending on how the year goes, you want to go with an internal hire after you disappoint? Tough to pull off. From Green Candle Guy, 
Jerry Jones is a showman. Signed T.O. to a, vet, a one-year vet min cover for Gallup in September, all for the hype. I think if it was just for the hype, they would have signed T.O. Uh, uh, longer ago. He's washed. A, a clever idea. It's funny. I, 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 I'm chuckling at it, but not realistic. From Jimmy Welsh, uh, Perion Winfrey went to my high school. What do you make of his tweet? Oh, what did Perion Winfrey tweet out now? Hold on. I know that Perion Winfrey is visiting the Dallas Cowboys. He's, he's one of their 30 visits, which we broke down you know, earlier this month, I should say. Oh, let me see if I can find his Twitter. I don't see his tweet up there, so I'm just going to assume. I didn't find it in a quick search. I'm going to assume you mean that Winfrey is visiting the Cowboys as a 30 visit. And yeah, that's kind of the plan there. That's just a good indication of there is some interest on day two for him. Manscaped is the presenting sponsor of today's show. You can get the Ultra Premium Collection for 20% off and free shipping when you use promo code COWBOYS at manscaped.com. That link will be in the comment section and the description. Manscaped reminds everyone that it is Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. So check your balls out, make sure everything's good down there, and make sure you're feeling good about yourself overall by using Manscaped's products. 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com when you use promo code COWBOYS. King Shadow, I'm now team receiver due to the depth at guard in this draft. See, I don't think the depth's that great. That's that's where we disagree. So if you love the depth, then yeah, go get a, go get a receiver. I want Traylon Burks to follow us, grab Cole Stranger, editing him, I want receiver at 24. Um, under the radar, it's not really being talked about. Uh, Ingram's got some very real character concerns that need to be vetted off the field. Uh, it's why he got suspended from LSU. So keep that in mind. I like Cole Strange, but I like Cole Strange more of like a third-ish round guy than a do second round guy. I feel better about getting a good receiver than I do feel about getting a good guard on day two. From Ray Cheney. I want Jordan Davis. What do you think it would cost to trade down? I assume you mean trade up, because you're not going to be like you're not going to be able to get Jordan Davis there. Y roughly speaking, your first round pick and your third round pick would get you up to about pick number eighteen. You've got a good draft relationship with Philadelphia, by the way, so you could move up in the top twenty fairly easily. Um, now, it's a lesser draft, so it might be a little bit less expensive. Maybe a team like the Chargers wants more picks. Wouldn't be the first one on that to recoup their loss of their second pick for Cleo Mack. That could be possible. If you can get Jordan Phillips or Jordan Davis past 14 and 15, it starts to make sense to go, up to, to go up to get him. But he might not be there in the end. I, I like Jordan Davis a lot. I think if he's there, Cowboys might do it. That's why they brought him in for a 30 visit. I don't think he ends up being the pick, though. If you want free Cowboys videos every single day, like these live videos and live mailbags that we're doing, hit that big red button and subscribe, youtube.com slash Cowboys TV. From Blood Slinger, how funny would it be if Jerry signed Kaepernick? Never going to happen. You're right, it's never going to happen because uh, he's not an NFL QB. It's been five years, 35 years old. I'm sorry, he's not good enough anymore. Um, <sighs> there'd be a lot of upset Cowboys fans. L let me just say that. Uh, now, look, Jerry signed kneelers before. I think it would be a bit different for Kaepernick. Plus, do we think he's better than uh, than uh, than Cooper Rush? Because I'm not sure that he is at this stage in his NFL career. From Nick S., trade for Tyler Lockett. I think I saw blogging the boys throw that out there. Uh, the answer is no, because the Seahawks say no. I would love him. He's an awesome football player. He brings speed and slot ability. He fits what I would love to get on this team. Here's the problem. Doesn't make sense this year. He's super cheap for the Cowboys right now. But he had an option bonus that was due to be picked up in February. And by all indications, the Seahawks did pick that up. Now, if they didn't, this number changes. But as of right now, trading away Tyler Lockett would incur a $28.2 million cap charge. Almost double what he's counting against the Seahawks cap right now. So, yes, they could trade him. The cost to make them eat that money this year is so exorbitant, nobody would offer it for Lockett. Now, if they didn't pick up the option bonus, which I'm pretty sure that they did, depending on which you know site you look at in terms of the money side of it, uh, that means it's only like an additional $5 million on their salary cap. So that 
is still not a very likely outcome for the Dallas Cowboys when it's all said and done. So, knowing that the number stuff gets weird sometimes, name a player who you guys want to trade for. I'm, I'm going to ask you to keep it realistic. I, I know not all of you will. It's okay. So let me know in the comments section. All right, from Chava. Okay, Chava it is, my friend. Uh, again, I'm sorry. That's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a tough one for me to pronounce. We need a strong left guard or left tackle to protect Dak Prescott. Hope we draft good players. I agree. It's kind of why I want to sign a guard, too, so I can just draft the best player on the board. Your offense, the root of your offense's issues last year was the offensive line was bad down the stretch. Like, they, it wasn't always just one player, but it was just like, okay, this time my center mess up play. This time it was my left guard. Then it was my right tackle. My left, my right guard and left tackle, my future Hall of Famers, they were missing plays too, which is really unusual for them. The entire offensive line got out of sorts once they benched Connor Williams, and even when they went back to him, it was never quite right again in the end. That is a significant red flag there for uh, – for the Cowboys, but the O-line was bad. Teams were like, we're going to play two-eye shell. Run the football. We dare you. And they couldn't run the football. I don't want to run the football unless when, except when teams dare me to. And you needed, you needed to be able to run the football down the stretch last year. And in light boxes, you just couldn't get it done. So the root of your causes were the offensive line, was the offensive line. All right, from Mark, my boy, any truth to the Cowboys signing ex-Pitt Pro Bowl guard? I, this is, I believe this is in reference to Trey Turner, which we actually broke down uh, on our rumors video. It was an idea floated out there. I don't hate it, but he's a right guard. I don't know if you want a right guard with Zach Martin over there if you might be looking for a left guard instead. Now, the NFC East, as many of you have said before, is not great. So who is the biggest threat to win the NFC East this year? Is it C for the Kami Commanders, E for the Eagles, or G for the Giants? Let me know right now in the comments section. From Justin, Tom, what about TJ Vasher? Should we play him more? I know we got Red Raider fans. Dallas Cowboys, Texas School, I get it. You cannot count on him because he was an undrafted free agent who didn't do anything last year because he was well, he was an injury stash. So I'm hoping he balls out in the preseason, but I'm not going to commit to anything to Vasher beyond that right now because that's not a great process of doing it for your young receivers. You got Simi Fayoko in there as well. Alan Williams, what would you trade to get DK Metcalf on Dallas now that we stupidly traded away Cooper? I don't know, but I really, I really want him on the Cowboys. Yeah, I would love the awesome receiver too, Alan. I agree. I think the cost is similar-ish to that of uh, Devontae Adams, Tyree Kill. We broke that down on a previous video this week, Alan. You're looking at a first and second-ish. Probably a little bit more to get him. Cap ain't going to do that. Nor is he going to pay the premium to then sign DK Metcalf to a long-term deal. All right, it is Masters week. I am very excited because I love the Masters and I like to watch golf because I am... I mean, what do I look like, right? Uh, who you got winning the Masters? Week? I'm pulling up the leaderboard right now, Trace. Cameron Smith, what a finish. Four under par total. Bookend double bogeys on his first and last. Yes, he could have easily shot eight under, but he doubled the first and last hole. Scotty Scheffler's four under, no surprise there. That certainly makes sense. Danny Willett, shocking there. Uh, I, I did throw some money down on Will Zalatoris on my... Uh, funny money betting side I got out there. He's minus two. Tiger finished one under. That's an awesome round for him. I am hyped. You can tell it's Masters week because I got I got green pants on. Can't see him. Look at that. That's incredible. That is. You can see my foot though. Yeah, green pants, baby. Uh, look at the rest of the leaderboard here. Scheffler is now is four under. He's playing well. Danny Willett, Joaquin Neiman. Someone asked me about Neiman, and someone also asked me about. Uh, Dan, uh, Danny Smith in the office. All right, where, where I I put my I put my most of my money on Hovland, and he's even par. Okay, he's in the mix. Let's see who played poorly this week. Ah, Molinari. He's never recovered from losing to uh, from losing to Tiger. Or at least one of the Molinaris is there. Uh, oh no! Oh, Bryson DeChambeau sucked. Oh no! Oh no! The guy everyone hates. No, that's disappointing. Hmm, that's too bad. 
Uh, Dustin Johnson's playing well. I saw that one from Joe Linden in there. Coming up after today's live show, we will have Cowboys Report After Hours on Rumble only. Make sure to follow us at rumble.com slash Cowboys TV. We're getting closer and closer to catching our Giants channel, and damn, I want to be in there. So I'm looking forward to that one there. Seven-round mock draft only on Rumble after the YouTube and Facebook streams end. We'll make sure the link to that video is in the comment section. It's in the description already. I see Bobby Hass in there. I see JW800, Audibles, Tractor Boy, and more. JW wants Tiger to win. I mean, I want Tiger to win too, even though it's maybe not the most likely outcome in the end. So make sure you head over there before the end of today's live show so we can do our Cowboys Report after our seven-round mock draft with trades. I want you guys right now in the comments section to name a player you want to trade away. However, I'm asking for realistic names only because I know how you guys tend to get. I've got six trade candidates coming up. That list includes, by the way, not one, but two cornerbacks on that list, two starting offensive linemen, a defensive end, and a former top draft pick by the Dallas Cowboys. That is my list. So make sure you watch all the way through so you can see each of the six guys I put together here on my trade candidates list. This is the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey breaking down some trade candidates before and kind of during the NFL draft as well. A lot of this does come down to what the Cowboys end up doing from that standpoint. So we're going to begin with Anthony Brown. He is first up here on my list, and this is a name that I think many of you might like to try to ship out. He could be an option if Dallas drafts a corner. Now the savings if you trade him away is $5 million. I am not in a rush to dump Anthony Brown right now, from my roster because he played well last year. He absolutely played well for, for the Dallas Cowboys. He was a good football player. His coverage stats were very impressive this past year. He did, you can push it. He, he, he played well. He absolutely played well. Uh, completed 54% of his passes, uh, almost, or allowed only 54% completion percentage, three interceptions, 17 pass breakups. I know the, the volume of yards is a lot. Remember, the Cowboys were thrown on a lot because they were winning games this past year. He's good. But if you spend a premium pick, if in some scenario the CeeDee Lamb or the Micah Parsons player, in the words of the Joneses, ends up being a corner, then you would, I think, shop Anthony Brown or maybe another corner we'll get to here in a minute. The Cowboys are in a good spot right now when it comes to the depth chart at corner. Trayvon Diggs is your number one. He had a big-time breakout year. Anthony Brown was your number two. Jordan Lewis was your three. And remember, Kelvin Joseph still exists. So if you spend a premium pick on a corner, that makes it four guys, young, all cheap. If you include Nashawn Wright, Diggs, Joseph, and insert young player here. That means I think you got to shop one of your corners. Anthony Brown, of the ones you'd be willing to trade away, would bring you, I believe, the most value back. I got an or early fourth round is what I would expect to get for Anthony Brown. Now remember, Joneses don't win trades. That has been an issue for a very long time for this organization. That has been a problem, and I hope will not continue to be one in the future. The other corner then, of course, is Jordan Lewis, right? Because you're not going to hear the other big-time names there. Not as much savings if you trade away Jordan Lewis, but in this scenario, Anthony Brown gets to remain your either outside or nickel corner. He's like your super swing backup. And then Lewis is a nickel only, doesn't have the same value. He wasn't as good as Anthony Brown was this past year. Three interceptions, 11 pass breakups, not bad. Higher completion rate, he played nickel, that's fair, understandable there. Three, three touchdowns allowed. As a nickel starting caliber corner, remembering that the Cowboys don't win trades very well, I think a late fifth would be doable-ish for Jordan Lewis because I think teams would say, ah, you're just going to cut the player. And as weird as this sounds, yeah, it's a little bit less than what you got for Amari Cooper. But you know what? Eh, it's, it's weird. Ig ignore the Amari trade. The, Amor the Amari trade's an outlier for value for most teams and players. So if you end up shopping a corner, who would you rather trade away? Type JL for Jordan Lewis or type in AB 
for Anthony Brown. This is the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break comes on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Next up is Connor McGovern, who I saw somebody put in the live chat, by the way. McGovern, objectively speaking, struggled at left guard. They were upset the Cowboys were with Connor Williams' holding penalties, so they benched him, put McGovern in, and went, oh, God, this is even worse. So they benched McGovern because he just can't play left guard, which is a problem for you because your scouting staff loved him, and now he's a backup for you, and you've allegedly turned down trade offers in the past. McGovern's numbers don't look that bad. The problem is when he was at right guard or at that fullback position, he was awesome at fullback. Duh, that's kind of the role he's playing. It shouldn't be a huge surprise to anyone necessarily. And then at right guard, he was solid too, except you have a franchise superstar right tackle in Zach Martin, so you kind of can't get him on there. Guard is a need for the Cowboys. Maybe there is a team out there who would say, you know what? What if we gambled on McGovern entering the final year of his deal in an attempt to see if he could be our starter at right guard or give him, uh, I think, a day three pick? I think a sixth-round pick would be lucky at this point. He costs about $2 million for a new team. Uh, the value is at its lowest point after being a third-round pick, so I don't think you're going to command a big trade for McGovern. This would be we drafted a guard and we're going to draft another guard and just move on from McGovern altogether. Now, Rumble is another video platform the Cowboys report is also trying to dominate. Unlike YouTube, you can actually play Rumble in the background uh, on your phone, which is nice because I also am a multitasker. I don't sit, ver I don't sit still very well, so I want to have some audio play in the background while doing other things. Rumble's perfect for that. Rumble.com slash Cowboys TV. It's all free, by the way. Go follow us over there for even more videos. Here's a dark horse name you might not have thought of. Tyler Biotish. Now, this makes sense if and only if the Cowboys draft a center early. If you draft one in, like, the fifth round, you're going to keep Biotish and let them compete. But if by some chance you draft Tyler Linderbaum, I think it makes sense to shop Biotish. Relative to other centers in the NFL, the production was not very good. Uh, the zero sacks look nice, but four hits and 17 hurries is a lot a lot for a center. And so many of you have DM'd me in the past asking, well, could he just play left guard? I don't think so. I don't think Biotish can play guard for you in the NFL. Or, or I, I don't think, I think his issues at center would only be amplified moving over to guard. Now, he's been a starter for a year and a half-ish. Give the extra half-ish on that one there. So there is some trade value for a cheap player, but the lack of guard flexibility, it's a big reason why he fell in the draft originally. So I'm going to go six-round pick is my projected trade value here for Tyler Biotish, similar to that of Connor McGovern. Um, I think Biotish is younger, he's on a better deal, but I think McGovern could, maybe a different team thinks he can play left guard as opposed to Biotish, who I think can only play center. Now, if you haven't already, Follow us on YouTube. Subscribe right now for free daily videos and live shows on Thursday. And, of course, we'll be live for the NFL Draft as well. We'll get excited or angry together. YouTube.com slash Cowboys TV. Hit that big red button if you're watching on YouTube right now. Here's our defensive end, Terrell Basham. I'm looking at numbers games, right, or at least potential hypothetical numbers games. The Cowboys are telling you we are want to draft an edge early. I think part of that is because uh, Terrell Basham is what he is. Um, it's not great. He can get you a couple sacks a season. It's what he's been over his entire NFL career with the Jets and Colts. Cowboys liked him coming out, but he was well, he was behind Dorrance Armstrong, behind Randy Gregory, behind Demarcus Lawrence's past year. So he was your edge four. And right now, if you don't even include Micah Parsons, he's, I think, your edge five to make the roster because there's Tank Lawrence, who's making it, Dorrance Armstrong, who's making it for sure. I would assume Dante Fowler makes the roster. Chauncey Golston is going to make it as a young former third-round pick. Basham then, if they add another early draft pick, he then falls from defensive end five. So he's defensive end number six. And if he's defensive end number six with Micah's passing ability – they carry all six guys? If everyone's healthy, I'm not so sure. 
So he might make more sense as a surprise roster cut for a big notable name, but you always shop those guys first. I don't think there'd be much value in Terrell Basham. I think you'd be lucky if you ended up getting a seventh round pick. I just, there's not the value there. It's really not the value. He's, he's not, he's just not that good in the end. He can, he can make some nice plays for you. I, I get all that at points, but he's, he's a backup in the end. And that player doesn't carry value at his contract when you can draft a young guy who might not be as good, but the upside is there. So what do you guys think? Will a cow or the Cowboys trade a player before or during the NFL draft? Type in one for yes, move at least one guy, or zero for no, they will not. Tristan Hill, who I know many of you guys are done with. We were all upset about the Tristan Hill pick because we wanted Juan Thornhill or safety is what it is there. He has never lived up to expectations, not even close. Hill has two tackles for loss and a half sack in his NFL career. Not a typo. He has not been a good football player. Just hasn't been. He's, he hasn't done anything. He's shown some flashes of disruption before his ACL injury in 2020. But this is like a bad season for the first year of his career, not his entire career. As things sit right now, I think Tristan Hill is defensive tackle number three. Or number four, behind Gallimore, Odigizua, Watkins, then it's Hill. Gallimore, Osa, and Hill are all kind of more of those three technique values there. That's kind of what I think he is. If they add another one of those guys, there's no need for Hill. Now, much like Terrell Basham, I don't think there'd be any real interest in Hill, especially with Rod Marinelli not coaching. Maybe uh, maybe Matt Eberflus wants to get him on a similar player uh, for the Chicago Bears and need three technique help. But he's been a major disappointment. Kind of feels like we're trending closer and closer to the eventual release of Tristan Hill. But if I could trade him, yeah, I would shop him right now. All right, let's anger the fan base all together here. Post your cancelable Cowboys takes in, in, in the live chat. What you got for me? This is intentionally cancelable, so it's kind of like when you say no offense. It means you can't. It means you can't get canceled for it you, because you're saying it's cancelable. We're acknowledging it's okay. I'm looking forward to see what uh, what we see here. Let's see what we got. Jonathan says I say Deering weird. Okay. During, Deering, whatever. Blame, blame it on my accent. Joseph is the next Deion Sanders. Ooh. Yeah, I don't like that one at all. Jeff Heath will be our next kicker. That's my Twitter joke I made the other day, Chris. Thank you. Outlandish Cowboys takes. Get him in for me in the live chat. Check on the Rumble comments here, too. I see Tractor Boy. I see uh, JW800, Bobby, Rex1417. As well, JVS Cuz 27's in there. Uh, Jerry should fire Stephen Jones. That is cancelable from Jerry's perspective. Uh, cut Dak. Dak overpaid. They should have kept Greg Zerline. The Joneses are amazing. Uh, Micah Parsons says Micah's the worst. There you go. Uh, toxic Burner comes. I would make a wait. Make a wish. Kids medical bills. I would pay a Make a wish. Kids medical bills. If they wish to make Jerry sell the team. It's funny. Uh, Zeke Elliott for guard. Steven has to extend Zeke. Draft Elam. I assume you mean Kair Elam there. Uh, Catboy Tom. Not funny. Uh, trade owners with the commanders. Wow. Draft car loss. This trade Dak. Because you have over 1,000 years. You need a guard first round. Uh, Earl Thomas to the Cowboys. There it is. All right. I think we did it. Earl Thomas Cowboys round one. Mailbag time is coming up next here, so I see super chats from uh, two from Mark, one from King Shadow twenty four, and another from Chameleon of Cambria. Great username, my friend. We'll get to those and any questions you guys have. So make sure you use hashtag Cowboys in the comment section right now. After this mailbag, the YouTube stream, the Facebook stream that'll end. We will be on Rumble only. So head over. Follow us, rumble.com slash Cowboys TV. We'll put that link in the comment section and in the description. About 40 people already watching us on Rumble. 
Thanks for sticking around, guys. We'll have the seven-round mock draft with trades only on Rumble coming up in, oh, about 15 minutes. But first, it's a mailbag. You're watching the Dallas Cowboys Report. I am your host, Tom Downey, answering all of your questions as part of our live Cowboys Report here with Super Chats leading the way in a big-time way. First up, from Randy Sitz, or Stitz. I'm going to mispronounce that there. With Matthew leaving the Saints with no contract, does it increase the uh, Cowboys to take a chance or signing of Curse and Hooker put the bash on it? I Look, they're not going to sign Tyron Matthew. That's too much money for them. If Matthew is unsigned a month after the draft, maybe the market starts to make more sense. But this team, self-imposed, will not pay more than $7 million per year or really more like six and a half to an outside free agent. So because of that, is not it's not going to happen. Matthew's going to get more than that. So wherever he ends up signing, I bet it's more than what the Cowboys are willing to pay him. Had you not signed Curse, maybe it could have made some more sense, but I find it quite unlikely. Trivia time for you guys. The answer coming up at a future point later on in the video, so stick around. Let me know, who was the first Cowboy to win NFL MVP? Drop your answers for me right now in the comments and stick around until the end of the show for the answer. For Mark, he was talking about Trey Turner. Uh, is he any good? Uh, Turner is a more of a right guard. He was better this year. Honestly, he's not better than Connor Williams, but you need a guard right now. So if you think he can play left guard, I would have some semblance of interest in it from that standpoint. From Terry Black, will the Cowboys extend Dalton Schultz? I think we got to know what happens in the draft. If the Cowboys, as I think they will, spend one of their first four picks on a tight end, I don't think they'll pay Dalton Schultz. This really feels like a true placeholder tag because Schultz is going to command all of the money on a big-time deal. He is going to get this type of contract. He's going to get $13 million or $12 million or more unless he wants to take less to stick around with the Cowboys. And the reasoning why is that's the market. And although the Jonas think the market does not apply to them, it does. The Cowboys are looking closely at tight ends in this year's draft. Doesn't mean a, a guarantee they'll draft someone, but they're sure as hell looking. They're, 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 they're aiming to find one. Bringing in guys like Jelani Woods, Kate Otten, etc. So I think it is a very real possibility that they draft a tight end, give him a bit of a redshirt developmental year, let Schultz win the tag, and then let him walk in free agency next year. So what do you think? Will the Cowboys get a long-term deal done with Dalton Schultz? I'll say before the franchise tag deadline this year. Y for yes, N for no. Let me know in the comments section. This will be the pinned comment on today's video. For my boy Mark, we need, we need a wide receiver. Cooks have to be traded for. Any free agent wideouts out there that are equal to him in quality and pay, and what will it cost for Cooks versus free agent receivers? At this point, no. If Odell Beckham is healthy, the answer is yes. He's going to miss at least part of the year, I would, I would argue. So kind of defeats the whole purpose, I think, of bringing him in for what, what would be a one-year deal to an extent. Um, Cooks will, will want a new deal soon. He might get $20 million a year. Well, welcome to the receiver market, Steven. Um, so if you just want the best receiver, it's either round one pick or trade for someone like Brandon Cooks. King Shadow 24, trade for Anthony Brown or draft and then draft Zion McCollum. Uh, I think that uh, – oh, not McCollum. Who's the other one? Uh, the UTSA kid. Oh, shoot. McCollum was a – I'll start with him here. Freak athlete. Uh, just absolutely – incredible uh, combine testing. Smaller school guy doesn't fit what the Cowboys typically like, which is, I think, always a potential riff. I think they like bigger name guys. I think he'd be a good fit for what Dan Quinn likes to do. I think Tariq Woolen. Like, Dan Quinn loved Nashawn Wright. Tariq Woolen is Nashawn Wright, but fast. And that guy's got that guy's got value. So I think Woolen might be their target over McCollum, but... I don't think you're going to let Dan Quinn pick a third corner in as many years in the top 100 where you need to take him to get both of those guys on your roster. The Cowboys report is now on Rumble, and we are fifth 
which is low-key embarrassing to our other big channels here at Chat Sports. The Raiders report, narrow lead over the Chiefs, narrow lead over the Browns, over the Giants, then the Cowboys. Help me win my bet. I want to beat Marshall, our Giants Now host, to 1,000 followers on Rumble. I just checked the numbers. We are now less than about 50 away. So we're close. If you haven't already, help me win my bet and get free videos on Rumble as well. Another video platform that doesn't believe in censorship, so I can drop as many F-bombs as I want. Rumble.com slash Cowboys TV. From Chameleon of Cambria, pick 24 has to be a big man. No receiver in round one. Love y'all's content. Thank you, my friend. Here's how I'll answer this. What if Zion Johnson, uh, Kenyon Green, and Linderbaum, and all the good offensive linemen are gone. Are you still forcing a big man? If Jordan Davis, Devontae Wyatt are gone, if you're picked over along the trenches, and it's you got all the receivers are still left, I think you got to go receiver. So I've got Kenyon Green, Zion Johnson, Chris Olave, Traylon Burks, all graded really similarly to each other. So whichever one they think is better, I say take. For my burner account, who do you think is the biggest Dallas Cowboys draft bust? Um, should be Steve Walsh, but we all forget about Steve Walsh because he had Troy Aikman. Bobby Carpenter, definitely up there. I think Morse Claiborne as well. Uh, so some not great tight end picks. If I can just pick one tight end, give me tight end. There's a lot of a lot of bad tight end picks by this team in the in round one and round two. Uh, round three's had a little bit more success there. So I'll I'll, I'll probably go. Bobby Carpenter, Morris Claiborne, and then you know, I think Taco Charlton, unfortunately, inside that conversation as well. Now, if you want free daily Dallas Cowboys videos, hit that big red button and subscribe right here on YouTube, if, assuming that is where you're watching, because we are ooh, we're close to 127,000, and then we're going to double up the commies' actual YouTube channel, and I cannot wait to buy that poverty organization. So hit that big red button right now. From Duncan39, how's the baby? Olivia's doing well. She's mostly sleeping through the night now. Uh, what is the deepest uh, position in the draft? Edge? I think edge is up there. I think receiver's always fairly deep. Um, it's not good at the top at all, but I actually like quite a few of the fourth-round tight ends. Now, that's a fourth-round grade, so uh, I'm not saying you're getting a first-round pick in the fourth. I'm saying you're getting a fourth-round pick in the fourth, but... There are several guys I like right in that range. I think corner's got some decent depth, and <sighs> offensive line isn't bad in that one. All right, from Mark, aloha. Any chance Skeletor and Stephen Jones retire? Jerry, yes. Stephen, no. Uh, that is not how this is going to end up going down for you. Those two ain't going anywhere. From Cool Sharky, and are following up on a question from our first mailbag. Brought us prime meant to include pick 56. Okay, so now we're doing a trade of 24, 56, fourth, and he said 167. Okay, so let me do my math here. Let's get this all lined up correctly. That would put you in the range of right about pick 15 with the Eagles for me, um, but... I think in this draft class, it could get you to 13. I think that 13 to 15 range is probably about right. So I think value is about, about right there from Broadus. That, that number makes a lot more sense than the, than the first, fourth, and the fifth. That didn't sound right to me. But if you're including your second, yes, here's my problem. Who, who are you taking? Are you going to get a receiver? If one of those tackles slides to you, slides to 13, if like a Charles Cross is there, then I would have interest because then I could try cross at left guard and I could have my long-term left tackle locked in too. From Cam, would you move McGovern to right guard and put Zach Martin at left guard? So my initial reaction is no. I don't like that idea because I don't want to move around Zach Martin. He's, he's awesome where he is. Don't mess with the one thing that was consistently working for you last year. Then I go, you know what? Maybe you consider all options. Because that was rough. Um, that, that, the offensive line play down the stretch, regardless of what PFF says it was rated out as, was not good. It was not consistent. They had real problems last year. So I've seen Zach Martin be a Hall of Famer at right guard. I saw him play a great left tackle in college. And I saw him play a good right or great right tackle when he was forced to sub in there. 
I don't think he wants to move positions. I think that should be factored into, into your argument there. But if you are convinced it is the only way to make your offensive line work, then okay. So what do you guys think? Who do you want at left guard? And this could be a draft pick, a free agent, whoever. Let me know in the comment section right now. From Juan Ramos, draft Vilas Jones, fifth. I think he can give us special teams value. I think you got, got the player right. This is the Tennessee wide receiver. Very fast, screams like kind of like your Malik Turner replacement type of type of guy. Uh, a little bit older, not great production, but in, uh, up until a late breakout after transferring from USC to Tennessee. So I'm on board with that idea. Fifth, if it's one of your later fifths, yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. Uh, from Parks House, 2174, three round mock draft. Cool. Kenyon Green, round one. Alec Pierce, round two. Sam Williams, round three. I'm in. I like Alec Pierce a lot. I, I, I want some speed and some size. He can give that to me. He absolutely can. Sam Williams, if you can give him the third round, I would be okay ish them in the second, but I really like him in the third round. So if you can promise me that, I am in right now. Let's ride. Here's our trivia answer. Might be a surprise for you. The first Cowboy win NFL MVP was Emmett Smith. Not Troy Aikman, not Roger Staubach like you might expect, but instead it was Emmett Smith. Super chat from Lance Dunbar's Burner. Who's the best NFL rapper, current or former? It's Rico Gathers, baby. I mean, Rico quit his NFL career to go rap. So that's the only right answer. Yeah, that's what you get right there. Yeah. All right, from Dallas 8 and 9, MM next skateboat. Whoever selects these to be read is clearly intelligent and cool. Trace. You're not, a, you're, you're not above praise, I guess, to get your question on air. Uh, Baker and Amari guarantees are similar. We got fifth within the sixth for Amari. Two fifths for Baker restructure when he gets here. But, but what am I doing with Baker? If I re to restructure him, I have to extend him. Baker does not want to be a backup. Like, that has made, been made very clear. So the value, I think, isn't that bad. I think the Browns would take it right now to get him off, off the roster. But I don't have a benefit of Baker saying, yes, I want to restructure. And I will take an extension to be a backup. You can't just restructure the rookie contract and you can't do other deals that have more years left on them. So I, I kind of like what you're going for there. If Baker gets cut, yeah, bring him in as a backup. But I think he wants to start. And that's not going to happen in Dallas. I will regret this when I read through the comment section, but I want you guys to post your cancelable Cowboys takes in the comment section. Remember, they are cancelable, which means it's kind of like if you say no offense, means no one can get mad at you because I'm asking for it specifically. Uh, toxic burner account is it true. Stephen Jones trying to trade our draft picks for more cap space. It's funny. No, they like to build through the draft in the end, and that's not going to change anytime soon. All right, that is going to do it for us live on YouTube and on Facebook. Cowboys Report After Hours on Rumble Only is about to get going. So I'm going to give everyone a chance. I'll make sure that link gets put in the live chat right now um, to get over to Rumble. We're going to have a seven-round Cowboys mock draft with trades, but it's only available on Rumble. Rumble.com slash Cowboys TV. The link is in the live chat. It's in the description as well. Get everyone over there so we can watch these. So you guys can watch these seven round Cowboys mock draft. I'll give you guys some time. I know that things are delayed on, on the YouTube side, like in terms of when I speak versus when it actually gets to your phone, because that's how the internet works to an extent. So head over there, rumble.com slash Cowboys TV. The link is in there. Right now, people are now upset about the uh, the cancelable Cowboys takes. That was the whole point in the end. There you go. So get in there. I see a lot of people already over on Rumble. I'm going to have Trace go ahead and end this stream right now. The Rumble side, Facebook and YouTube is done. Get over to Rumble right now if you want our seven-round Cowboys mock draft.